everyone. Welcome back to Beyond the Real Tarot and Astrology. My name is Candice Marie. Thanks for joining me. I'll be your astrologer today. Hopefully you guys are doing well, uh, thriving in the midst of this lunar eclipse, taking place very early this morning, but frankly, we are still in it clear until the end of this month. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button below so you're alerted as to when we have new content coming out on the channel. We are so very close to my goal of uh, 10K. We're less than 250 people away. So help me reach my goal uh, for my birthday this week by hitting that 10K on the channel. It would be the best gift that you guys can give me. As always, I appreciate your comments, your thumbs up, sharing is caring. And if you would like to donate to Beyond the Veil or become a member. Well, guys, um, you know, so I've been putting out so many videos trying to kind of dissect and break down all of the different aspects that's going on in the midst of this lunar eclipse in Taurus. Now, it's the sister eclipse to uh, the one that we had two weeks ago, the solar eclipse in Scorpio. Eclipses always come in pairs. Um, but something that I wanted to talk about that is probably the last aspect is the Sun, Mercury, Kazemi in Scorpio. You guys know whenever these Kazemis take place, I generally make a video just to give you guys a heads up if there's just like some extra messages out there uh, in the cosmos and it's definitely happening. How to make a video on this because I'm born with the exact same Sun, Mercury, Kazemi. Um, it's at 18 degrees, but nevertheless, still I have that same conjunction natally. So I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna talk about it a little bit today. Um, so you're going to obviously be feeling this the most uh, when the transit itself hits. So the Kazemi is taking place today. It is part of the eclipse and I'll talk about why. Um, but it may be something that is even kind of maybe even sprinkling into the ninth. We'll, we'll see how long that takes. Uh, Mercury is making just a ton of aspects, similar um, aspects as, uh, you know, the other planets that have been moving through Scorpio. So you guys are familiar with me talking about the conjunctions to the south node where there is like an unlocking or a releasing or a letting go. The oppositions that we have seen then to uh, Taurus um, and Uranus, right? Uranus is there, the north node is there, which is about radically changing and transforming the future, uh, transforming our physical reality, our money, our pleasure, our food, our bodies, right? So we see a lot of uh, disturbances happen when we see oppositions to Uranus. Um, and we also see that Mercury is coming into a square with Saturn. So similar patterns, we call this a fixed T square because we have planets in opposition of one fixed sign to the other coming into a hard 90 degree angle with another fixed planet. So uh, really, you know, when we have lunar eclipses, the moon is the star. So as I've said in previous videos, the moon very much is the star today. Um, but Uranus is saying, hey, hold on, I'm part of this. And Saturn is saying, uh, you're going to have to kind of check with me. <laughs> so there's some, there's some road bumps that kind of happen here. So not your traditional uh, Mercury Kazemi, right? When we're looking at the Kazemi, this is um, the planet actually pulling ahead of the sun. So, you know, Venus and also Mercury are never far off from the sun. They follow very closely, generally within about two signs. Um, so this is not unusual, right? So when we get to Scorpio season, we see both Mercury and Venus somewhere kind of nearby, but we don't always see a Kazemi. In fact, really the only times generally that we see Kazemis for the most part is closer to when we have Mercury retrograde. So at some point in the retrograde, kind of the midway point, we will see that Mercury retrograding will conjunct the sun, which represents like a, um, a reworking or a rebirth of the mind. So we see these at least three times a year, but there can be other transits that happen throughout the year where it just so happens that Mercury is kind of catching up with the sun. So sometimes they're kind of peppered in um, at, at random. And if you get lucky, then you wanna take a look at where that Mercury Kazemi is taking place. So I'm focusing on Scorpio. So you wanna take a look at where Scorpio is in your natal chart. So this particular transit of the sun Mercury Kazemi is gonna be felt very strongly on November 8th and ninth, but it's happening on the eighth. And like I said, it's kind of like thrown into like the cosmic mashup of a lunar eclipse, which is already generally pretty destabilizing uh, a handful of planets that are gonna be in opposition to Uranus, which is kind of rocking and rattling and rolling. And then all of these really hard angles that are being made to Saturn. So it's almost like 
the Mercury South Node conjunction was a releasing and letting go of um, old outdated thinking. Um, and then when we see it come into the opposition with Uranus, it's like, okay, we're acknowledging, we're letting that go. Maybe you guys saw that video I did about detachment. It opposes Uranus and we seek liberation and freedom of the physical body, our physical you know, experience, our minds even. And then it comes into a hard angle with Saturn. So it does represent the need to close out old patterns and let things go. So once again, very unusual transits uh, during a Kazemi because all of these have to be kind of factored in. But in, in, in general kind of layman's terms, um, this is uh, an extra splash of important information, right? Because Mercury is the sign that's traditionally associated both with Gemini as well as the sign of Virgo. And when these two um, go through any sign, it is breaking down information, writing, texting, calling, uh, assessing, you know, data and uh, graphs and charts. And it's about what kind of comes together and what works together, right? So when we place Mercury, the messenger, um, God of communication, transportation, even exchange, business, in the sign of Scorpio, um, it's got a much more emotional, because it's a water element, sensitive, um, almost darker kind of taboo vibe uh, because this is a sign that is associated both with uh, Pluto as well as Mars. So we're going to notice that just having these two planets conjunct, traditionally you'll hear this as kind of being under the beams of the sun and things are getting burned up. So we're definitely seeing that with Venus right now. Um, but when Mercury pulls ahead and creates this Kazemi where it's within a one degree orb, um, it's actually considered very beneficial, okay? So you can have this Kazemi in a variation of signs, but it, it is something that kind of lessens the blow of having um, Mercury get fried by the, the, by the beams of the sun. Um, but because, like I said, it, it's a sign that's associated with Mars and Pluto, it's very intuitive, covert, psychic, um, and it's about something deep emotional and insensitive, right? Scorpio also touches on the topics of taxes, loans, insurance, psychological triggers, um, and sexual energy in nature, right? Transformative, um, regeneration, you know, all of those fun kind of Scorpio themes. So it's like, if this were not an eclipse, if we did not see the oppositions in the squares, I would say to anybody listening or to a client, hey, Watch on this day, there's gonna be some important information that is going to be revealed. And that's because Mercury is relaying a message to the sun. So he's in the superior position, he's right ahead of the sun. This is a very short transit, although we will see the sun and Mercury follow you know, each other pretty closely over the next couple of days. It may represent kind of like this like blow up situation or scandal <laughs> that's in the news uh, for the better part of like the next week or so, which is not, uh, strange considering we're on the eve of midterm elections. Um, not many people know that midterms are not just purely important for our country, but it does affect um, what we end up doing also and how that has like a, an impact on the rest of the world. So we have these midterm elections basically um, halfway through pretty much every presidential term. Um, not many people also know that part of the reason why we have the system that we have is it's meant to be set up so no one party or branch has all of the control, right? I'm not gonna get into politics, I'm gonna talk about that, but so that way there is a sense of checks and balances and um, there can be gridlock, basically. Like the founding fathers set it up that way, so that way we didn't have too many Republicans in control or too many uh, Democrats in the various branches, um, leading there to just be like total kind of chaos and one side kind of running away with things and making a bunch of decisions that may not set well with the rest of the country. Um, it's safe to say that like oppositions can represent division, so I do think that this is kind of feeding into that. Um, I try not to like, you know, I'm not a fear monger astrologer. I'm going to tell you guys really what I see. But the truth is, is that with the sun conjunct Mercury Kazemi, this is like people losing their minds, right? It can be like, oh my God, did you see this information? Can you believe this? It can also represent like a burning up um, of uh, wires or anything in regards to like, I'm not going to say electrical, but like digital things. So I'm wondering if this is going to be like 
uh, issues in regards to like vote counting. As I was getting ready to film this, I was just kind of listening to headlines. And of course, you know, uh, the White House comes out and makes a statement basically saying that President Biden is already telling people, be patient, it could take a couple days to get your results. Um, not sure if you guys are aware of like what's been going on in Brazil and South America and just this whole topic of like their elections and how um, what was the most popular uh, presidential candidate basically kind of got bumped and then they brought somebody new in um, who is definitely on the complete different opposite end of the spectrum. Um, not hearing about it in mainstream media, but it's definitely finally starting to trickle in in independent sources. And we're seeing like millions of people that are out in the streets and they're basically um, making comments and they're using the gesture of the mask and covering their mouth about the silencing um, of what's going on in the media. Very Scorpio, right? It's like very like covert, like, you know, you can see it and it's very intense and it's very passionate and it's about getting to the core of the truth. Um, so I'm anticipating you know, I guess the pros of this is, is that if you can break away from all of the noise of the eclipse, if you can get out of the chaos that's going on like out and about, and if you can kind of find a quiet and a safe space um, and learn to be patient and work through what almost feels like a bardo phase right now. Those of you guys may or may not know what that means, but um, basically it's as like the soul is transitioning, we're in limbo, right? Like we're, we're on the precipice of like coming into a new phase that's literally being birthed. Taurus is about life. It's about growth. And we see all these planets in Scorpio, which can be some really scary, uncomfortable, fearful, toxic things that are coming up. But there is this uh, really sweet balance between life and death whenever you're dealing with the Taurus and Scorpio axis. And I believe that the squares to Saturn is like the labor pain and the contractions before this new thing arrives. So we're going to see um, lots of people communicating and talking about, um, oh my God, I can't believe this, or I got this unexpected you know, email or conversation. That's generally what happens with the Kazemi. Mercury comes along and sprinkles his cosmic goodies and he'll kind of give you little riddles or if, you're, if your eye can catch it, you'll see a, a phrase on a license plate. Or for me, it's always been something magical. I drop a book, I pick it up, I look at it and it's the phrase that I needed to see, right? You drop your deck of tarot cards and there happens to be two or three that are flipped up and it's literally what you needed to hear. Maybe it's me, I'm a little biased because like I said, I was born with this conjunction. And so it's something that it's taken me a really long time to understand that that conjunction between Mercury and the sun, like it can be super loud. Like it, it can be hard to cut through the fear or cut through um, the intensity or the passion and be able to kind of take a step back and silence your mind and allow the messages to come in. That's how I have learned to kind of work with this energy in my own life that when I get really quiet and I listen, usually I'll get the information or I'll get the guidance. But if I have motor brain and I'm not listening or I'm running around and I'm just kind of like frazzled, it's really hard for me to be able to uh, be open and be connected. Um, so one of the ways that I have learned to work with this energy and channel it is just to sit and make videos, just to basically be the vessel and be like, okay, cool, I'm gonna talk for an hour. Half the time I'll do the video and I don't even really remember what I said, which is the weird thing. I work off notes, like I have an outline and things that I'm looking at as I'm talking to you that are really important, like kind of touching points. But for the most part, I let that guide me, right? That's what I want you guys to be present with over the next 48 hours is find the silence, let that guide you and give you the information and the direction that you need, especially in what can be a very turbulent next couple of days. There's gonna be a lot of upsets that are gonna be happening when we have squares and conjunctions to the nodes um, or oppositions to the nodes or squares to Saturn, we see lots of collective shift hitting the fan um, and it's very karmic. So um, in a way we can be in tune, right? We can get this message very suddenly or very unexpectedly um, in the form of a dream, in the form of um, like just being able to have these um, kind of spur of the moment conversations where we find that missing envelope and, you know, in that envelope, it has almost like the, the password to the safe that we've needed to get into. Very Scorpio. So there's definitely going to be a lot of um, things that are being uncovered for us in general. Um, and, and something else that I didn't touch on a lot of, and I was thinking about this after I made my last couple of videos is, I don't feel like I spoke on enough talking about the South Node and that the South Node is very much 
not just about loss, but liberation, right? That's really the word. It's the ability to tune in and not needing anything and letting go of like all of the trappings and everything that kind of ties us to that particular house or that particular sign. So there's so much like really, really amazing astrology that's happening right now as all these planets come into conjunction with the South Node and we're kind of at that tipping point where we can fall back into past patterns of fear, not having enough, being jealous, being angry, reactionary, possessive, right? All of these lower octaves that what we see with Scorpio, but not many people realize that, you know, even though Scorpio gets a bad rap for being like the villain of the Zodiac, when you're dealing with any sign, when they're working with their higher octave kind of like personality traits, you're gonna see like what's so amazing about them. So yes, you can see a lot of like pain and anguish and, and bitterness um, with Scorpio, but you can also see some really strong individuals that have been through the fire and brimstone. Like they've dealt with all of that. They've gone to hell and back. They know how to be able to regenerate and they've been able to use those experiences to shine a light on shadow, be aware of shadow. And um, I always tell people like, you know, you learn which demons you wanna actually keep on a leash whenever you're dealing with Scorpio placements. We need just a little bit of enough to kind of like give us a nudge in the right direction and give us a little bit of an edge, but it's a fine line learning how much we allow that to take over our lives. So while these conjunctions are happening, Sun, Mercury, Venus, all conjunct the South Node, all conjunct the Sun, we may be talking about what I think, what I believe, what I know to be true. I'm not talking about facts, I'm talking about in our core, on a spiritual level, I know this is truth, I know that this is my truth, I know this is my path, my direction, or I know there's something else going on here. I can't quite put my finger on it, but there's something else going on here. Over the next few days after the eclipse, when it starts to settle, these placements are gonna start coming into sextiles with Pluto, which is gonna represent power, transformation, the ability to uncover something, unearth something that can be very valuable. So there's a lot of beauty in the breakdown, right? Venus and in, in, in Scorpio and the South Node in Scorpio. And for what we're willing to release and let go of, there can be liberation, there can be this detachment, this, oh, I'm finally pulling myself out of that situation that I've taken so long to finally kind of mentally detach from. So for many of us, it can be this awareness that we have during the Kazemi of a bad habit or um, a, a kind of getting ourselves like mentally in a little bit of a rut. That's the other way that I could see this playing out as well. Um, obviously, I'm really curious to see, I think, I think the biggest, examples uh, that I can give you guys is that there's most likely going to be a surprise document that is uh, exposed um, in the world in general, that there is just some data drop or something that's hacked into and somebody exposes, you know, how much money somebody has invested in something or if somebody took hush money for something else or something revolving around the truth in relation to um, somebody who's in charge. You know, when we think of like eclipses in general, like in, in, in ancient times, when you're hearing about like a total eclipse and, you know, things that have the ruler conjunct the south node and all kinds of stuff, like you'd hear traditional astrologers say like, oh, this is the fall of the kingdom. You know, like everybody's going to panic, like the king is going under. Obviously, we live in modern times, so we don't really kind of use those kind of tendencies. But I look at this and I go, wow, you know, what, what a number of aspects to be happening on an eclipse. This is going to be a much more turbulent, active eclipse. I think it's going to shake things out. And I'm trying to be more optimistic that that all these South Node aspects in Scorpio and the Kazemi is like that final conversation you have with yourself or with a loved one or a partner or whatever and being like, I'm finally sick of my own shit in this area of my life. Like this has got to go. Um, in order to fully embrace, I think, where we're going to be going with the North Node, which can be, um, you know, you're here in Western astrology, that's where we want to go, that's where you grow, right? And there's some truth to that, but people don't also realize that the darker side of the North Node is obsessive, fixated. Uh, we're going to put so much more power and emphasis and like focus on that area of our life really for the next couple of weeks and months, even though this is a full moon eclipse. So the south node is like, I'm okay without that. I can detach from that. I can let that go. I can part with that because I know that it's going to probably be better for me mentally. And you might get that wink from, from Mercury from the universe that's like, it's okay. It's time to, to release that. 
And then you'll notice this like shift energetically where then it's going to throw you into the Taurus area of your chart and you're going to go, now I want more of that. Okay. So uh, just, just like a fun tidbit, you know, just to kind of let you guys know why this might be a little bit more um, uh, of a different kind of Kazemi flavor because all of the aspects. So when people keep asking me, what's going on right now? I'm like, how much time do you have? <laughs> you know, it's not one particular transit. It's just everything at one time. And I'm still very, very intrigued by the fact that, you know, all of this energy ruled by Mars um, and you've got Mars in conjunct Pluto and uh, Mars is the focal point of a building, like I said, yod between these two planets. So really highlighting the importance of the, of the Mars retrograde in Gemini. I'm already starting to see it and I can only say so much because I don't want to be somebody who's getting kind of like flagged for anything, but the Mars retrograde in Gemini is definitely about um, a process of people walking back things that they have said publicly or in the media, a slowing down of uh, maybe being so forthcoming or aggressive or really kind of being like a cheerleader for a particular narrative or a certain path in society, right? Um, now it's being walked back and it's in conjunct Pluto. So now some of those walking back comments or statements or shifting of perspectives or beliefs um, is really kind of at odds with maybe governments or, you know, power structures, whatever, because it's in conjunct Pluto. Um, but keep in mind that this eclipse is in opposition to Scorpio. So as a result of some of the uncovering, the digging, the things that kind of come out throughout Scorpio season will be further brought out in Sag season. And then we are going to start seeing a huge challenge to the narrative in media in general for the next few months. I'm not saying it, things are right or wrong. I'm just saying that there is definitely going to be kind of a follow-up that's going to be like, uh, what is all of this? Like, what are, what are all these facts and numbers and things that we were not aware of or things that we did not hear or things that were manipulated or things that didn't come out at all? Um, so it'd be interesting to kind of see how that plays out. But all of the astrology it's, it's very much intertwined in a very, very, very big way still to the Saturn Uranus square, where we buckle down, where we break free. This is an eclipse that's encouraging things to just be released, you know, and not just in, the, in a south node sense of like, oh, let it go. But in the north node sense of have the emotional release, right? Moon Uranus. Moon Uranus conjunctions in general, um, in a natal chart, especially, that's always somebody who's just like, very emotionally intelligent. They may seem a little erratic. They might have different kind of patterns with their moods and emotional relation. They might, you know, kind of move around a little bit sometimes, but I've always found these individuals to be extremely emotionally connected. And I think that what the beauty of this eclipse is, is that we're going to see some big emotions coming up. That's making us realize like, this is how I want to feel all the time right? All the time. I'm hearing a lot of people saying, I'm just sick of feeling like this. I want to finally have that. Or it's so amazing to feel this way. I didn't know that things could feel this way. All I had to do was cut out X, Y, Z. So you're going to find yourself probably on one of two sides of the equation. I've heard more people saying that they're having challenges with these energies than, than other people who are thriving. But if you personally have a lot of planets in Scorpio, or if you personally have a lot of planets in um, even in, in Capricorn, I could see that being a thing, uh, but like the Taurus, Gemini, Aquarius peeps, you guys are having a little bit more of a difficult time with this energy. So just know that whatever is breaking down or breaking through, it's to be able to have an emotional liberation. And I feel like, you know, this Kazemi is a big piece of the puzzle, literally and figuratively to help us realize that, um, we can't have physical shift until we've kind of cleared the decks, right? emotionally, spiritually, energetically, physically, whatever, like we have to detox, cleanse, and purge. What can help during this uh, particular Kazemi is, like I said, other than finding quiet time, I mean, Scorpio is a sign associated with the occult and mysticism. So we might find that there's more abilities to connect with the other side. So whether you're using your tarot deck, your Ouija board, your crystal ball, it doesn't matter. There is an ability to kind of have more contact, I think, with the other side in the spirit realm. And we may find that Dreams are more significant. There can definitely be a little bit more kind of like uh, slight hocus pocus paranormal things that are going on, things that go bump in the night or just very prominent dreams and connections that we may have from loved ones. 
Um, I've heard a number of people telling me that they're like, oh my gosh, I was at the store the other day and I swear I saw my grandma in mid, you know, mid sight, or I woke up and I was hearing, you know, my, my brother's voice and he passed recently. So there can be definitely a lot more opportunities to kind of connect, especially on a mediumship level, um, and have support, right? And of course that would be happening in the midst of eclipses and full moons when the energy is already kind of in full bloom, but I think a lot of this might be where there is some of that support that's coming through from the other side um, in order to help us through this birthing process of being able to kind of like find the light. That's what we see when we see a full moon. We see something illuminated. It's at its brightest, fullest form. So whatever has happened yesterday, today, tomorrow is a big piece of the puzzle for what's being illuminated that emotionally and physically needs to come into alignment even if it means that you, uh, you know, you have to, you have to take some time to sit and be quiet and be open to receive it. So, if you're into, um, you know, anything in regards to like tarot or divination, awesome day or two to be doing that. Look for those cosmic messages. Um, I would like to show you guys where this is going to be taking place for each and every one of the 12 rising signs. And being that it's going to be a Kazemi, I'd like to pull a card for you guys as well. Um, but before I do that, I want to read you the Sabian symbol for 17 degrees of uh, Scorpio. I have not used my Sabian symbol books in a little bit. So let me read that for you, and then we'll get into the 12 rising signs. Those of you guys who uh, have seen the channel before, you know I love this book. Um, basically, the Sabian symbols help give us a little bit more food for thought for that specific degree in the zodiac. You always round up, so if it's 16 degrees and change the conjunction, we're going to read 17 of Scorpio. For those of you guys who have the book, it's page 260. Scorpio 17, a woman the father of her own child. The theme is a perfect blend. The symbol speaks to a man's struggle to meet his obligations in the everyday world, while at the same time longing to find higher meaning in his life or live a more transcendent levels. In simple terms, it's his awareness of what yet could be. The image, the father of her own child, is a symbol of creativity, self-sufficiency, and independence. In terms, the symbol describes integration of the feminine and masculine or spiritual and material natures and the blending of the head and the heart or reason and emotion. On a practical level, the symbol can describe those periods in an individual's life when, it's time to, when, when his time is taken up with the job, family, and other practical responsibilities, and he feels he's not living up to his full potential. Implicit in this symbol is the inner harmony, personal strength, and certain do-it-yourself quality. At its highest, the symbol represents the extraordinary capacity for accomplishment and the ability to find significance and purpose in everyday obligations of life. Uh, watch for the willfulness and refusal to cooperate with others. The accent is on independence and creativity. You could be feeling it's time to take charge, take charge of your life and take matters into your own hands. Your greatest advantage lies in doing what you feel is best for yourself. Decide what you want to achieve and start gathering what you need to do it. Guard against burning all bridges um, behind you by offending or cutting yourself off from those who can help you. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. Stepping stones would be creation, birth, formation, new life, do-it-yourself, independent, self-sufficient, pulling things together, and self-integration. Pretty cool, huh? So it's And it's, it's so interesting because, like I said, Taurus is very, like, grounded practical everyday life like matter of fact and scorpio is like look behind the curtain you know it's like what's going on behind the scenes what happens in the dark what's happening you know in the spirit world and where i think we do find that we need to be adding a little bit more uh magic in our in our daily routines and if you guys look for it you're going to find it hopefully um as always, I am a Western astrologer, so this is going to be for whole sign Western predictions. You want to listen for your rising sign. That's going to give you the most accurate indication of where this is going to play out in your life. You can also listen to your sun or your moon sign as well. I've heard a number of people comment and like ask questions. I always let you guys know, listen to your whole rising sign. If you're into Placidus, you might have to listen to two different rising signs to get an idea. Um, if, if you want to listen to Placidus, you need to listen to the house where, uh, where this particular degree is. So once again, it's 16 degrees of Scorpio. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump into the 12 rising signs and we'll take a look. All right. So this is going to be for Aries and Aries rising. Hope you guys are doing well. 
Um, all right, guys, so you have a Sun Mercury Kazemi that is setting up in the sign of Scorpio and it's in your eighth house. Uh, interesting vibes you got going on. Obviously, Mercury rules your sixth house of like daily routines, health, and coworkers. Um, and then we have Mercury also being the ruler of your third house of communication. I have a feeling that there can be just like a very insightful conversation that can suddenly be had, possibly a, with a coworker or with a sibling. Um, also, something that might pertain to your health, like documents and paperwork relating to your health. Um, anything in terms of getting support also, or maybe even like secret information from a neighbor, a sibling, um, a, a friend, somebody at work kind of lets you in on like a little piece of gossip uh, that you were not aware of, okay? Um, being that it's happening in your eighth house, this is about joint resources. So it can be having a conversation with a coworker about, you know, getting underpaid. It can be receiving a letter in the mail that you owe something in your taxes. Um, it can be that you have a conversation with your partner and they're saying, you know, I lost a chunk of change or I can't find my wallet or, you know, like something went missing. You might hear something like that happening as a result of uh, this Kazemi. But Likely it is a juicy piece of information. <laughs> That's the one thing I'll tell you. A very juicy piece of information that you were not aware of. Um, I can't help but acknowledge that you've got oppositions to the second house and you've also got these squares taking place with Saturn. So there may also be a sense of having to have difficult conversations about paying off loans or paying off mortgages um, and kind of feeling like you're in between a rock and a hard place. The eclipse that's taking place in your second is definitely about big spending, big gains, but it might be that you unexpectedly um, have to deal with something in terms of somebody else's money. Insurance and health documents makes me kind of wonder here, um, especially because you know Mercury is associated with the sixth house of health. Um, not a time to not have insurance documents if you're if you're traveling. Not a time also to uh, be trying to make major change ups and switch ups also with insurance. On the flip side, if you've been hoping that you're going to like uh, get a pre-authorization or that something is going to be reimbursed, you may actually find out as a result of this transit. So let's see what the cards say for you in terms of what may be coming from this Kazemi for you, my dear Aries. Well, it's good news, right? Ten of Cups. Um, I feel like this is kind of like yes, it got handled type energy or something to celebrate, like paying something off, somebody you know, saying that you got approved for something, getting good news. It might be like, hey, you know, like we, it was just a scare. It's nothing that you need to be worried about. Your health is clear. Something to celebrate. So it doesn't have that stigma that you would usually see with like the South node here. That's like, oh, there's an issue with insurance or there's an accident or like, you know, somebody's died. I mean, there could be some heavy stuff that comes with some of these transits in your eighth house. It looks like it's reason to celebrate. So it could be that you're hearing from somebody, especially a partner or a business partner, like, hey, we got approved or we ended up getting a bonus or we kind of beat our, um, our expected, you know, numbers for this month and we're doing very well. Regardless of what it is, to me, it seems like something that's worth celebrating. So uh, that's really great news for you, Aries. Let me know how it goes. Let's take this now to Taurus and Taurus rising. Hope you're doing well, Taurus. We have got a Sun Mercury Kazemi taking place in your seventh house, Taurus. Um, obviously, there's lots of just action that's been going on in regards to you and other people. The seventh house is marital partners. Um, it also deals with business partners, clients, um, you know, your, your marketplace. So there is this sense of being lots of information coming through from other people, okay? So you're going to be finding that maybe you're just kind of uh, like flooded with phone calls and messages and text messages and all kinds of people who are trying to reach out to you or just some really important conversations that you have to have with others. Um, Mercury rules your fifth house of creative projects and also children, love affairs, um, anything in regards to speculative stuff, taking chances with money and resources. It also rules your second house of money and resources. So it's very possible, Taurus, that your partner says something to you like, come on, like, let's go have some fun. Like, we're going to spend some money. 
<laughs> we're, we're, we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a good time in the next over like the next week or so. Um, there can be information that also comes out about something that has shifted or suddenly changed in regards to uh, the direction that they are going when it comes to creative projects. Uh, maybe there is a sense of them letting you know, like, hey, you know, I have this idea for something that we should sell. They may also have some news for you pertaining to children. So Mercury ruling the fifth house and it's in the seventh. The seventh house is your partner's, but it's partner's body. So if you're somebody who's in a relationship, you're with someone, it is possible that they could say, I love you. It is possible that they could also say, I'm pregnant. So that opposition to the moon uh, makes me feel like there's definitely going to be some very colorful conversations that you're going to have with another person. You may feel like you're in a situation right now where somebody's trying to talk with you or talk at you and you're like, I don't know if I want to keep this person around, right? Just because of the South Node Eclipse. But um, the second house is what we possess. So there can be a sense of you saying like, you know, I don't value this relationship anymore. I don't value this connection anymore. And there can be finally kind of coming out with that and having a conversation with another person about shifting gears um, in regards to your value system in general. Obviously, the oppositions to Uranus in your sign, the moon in your sign can kind of indicate that there's a difficult time emotionally relating and that you're just not quite seeing eye to eye about things. And maybe the way that you guys both approach um, children, having fun, um, investing, creative projects is very different. And obviously, it's going to all come into some uh, bang up stuff in regards to Saturn. So be mindful of words and conversations with other people. You may get some um, unexpected contact from somebody. So you might get like a text message or an email or a phone call from, from somebody that you were um, maybe not expecting to hear from or possibly even someone from the past. Let's take a look and see what the cards say for you, Taurus. Three of coins. You know, Interesting, because this is like a very like, how can we problem solve and have meetings and talk about working better together? So I don't know if this is like with a client, if this is going to be with a partner, um, but there is a sense of like wanting to discuss this and like working as a team, whether that's you and other people or saying that you need to bring other people in to kind of help you. For those of you who partner Tauruses who are having issues in relationships, you know, I think the Sun Mercury Kazemi could be like, having a conversation with like a therapist or like a third party or like a mediator to kind of help you through the process of like going through a difficult time, connecting with someone and having a little bit of a buffer. Um, three of coins is about working together towards a common goal. So there can also be like a sense of like realizing that both you and another person are just going back and forth and you're really saying the same thing, um, but there may be like a sense of like somebody's pride or ego kind of getting in the way and like, not allowing everybody to kind of do their own separate um, or play their own separate role in the situation. So there can be like a little bit of like micromanaging going on. Um, but Three of Pentacles is a great card. It's saying you have the ability to come together as a team and like find practical solutions for being able to build something better. Okay. Good luck, Taurus. We've got Gemini and Gemini rising. Hopefully you are doing well, my gems. Uh, we've got a Sun Mercury Kazemi, which should always interest you because you're ruled by Mercury. So this uh, Kazemi is taking place in Scorpio, located in your sixth house. So it's going to come within the realm of your uh, daily routine, your health. It could be something about a pet. It could be a reorganization of your workspace. It could be a change of your schedule, that kind of stuff. Uh, Mercury rules, obviously, your ascendant. It also rules your fourth house. So it tells me that there is like a sense of you possibly being like, that's it, I'm cleaning house. <laughs> like, get out of my way. I'm cleaning out all the closets. You know, I'm dusting, I'm sweeping, I'm mopping. Um, and I say that because this is the, the busy house. This is also the house that's associated with uh, kind of karmic payback. So for Mercury and the sun to be so close, like there may be a sense of you having to help a neighbor, having to help a sibling, having to sit on the phone and talk somebody through a crisis, uh, you know, driving a neighbor to pick up their prescription, you know, like walking your sister's dog, that kind of stuff. Um, but this is where you can be a little bit more accident prone and you, you may, not may, you will benefit, Gemini. You have to listen to your body at the time of this uh, particular um, transit. 
it's not just the eclipse, okay? But the fact that this is shaping up in your sixth house and there's some sense of going, that's it, you know, no more of this habit, like no more chocolate cake, no more sleeping in, uh, or, you know, it's time for me to go through a detox or a cleanse. Um, all of this is ruled by Mars and you can't see it in this chart, but Mars is retrograde through your sign. So I think it's doubly in regards to making some changes and intuitively embracing kind of cutting some things either from your diet or your day-to-day -day life. It could mean also that there can be like a little bit of like a, some gossipy energy in the workspace and you want to watch for not being the one who's actually proactively doing that. I'm not just talking about participating in it. I mean, I mean doing it because Mercury is involved. So there can be something that you're talking about at work and then it spreads like wildfire. So just be mindful of that as well. Um, but if it's not that, it's gonna be, you know, doing some emotional house cleaning, uh, doing some uh, clearing out in regards to like family drama. You might be reorganizing things in regards to your home space. If you have just moved or you're planning on moving, it could be, you know, packing up or unpacking. That's the other way that I could look at this as well. But because this is about your physical health and routines and the eclipses in the 12th house of what's not expected, I have this feeling that likely whatever kind of comes up for you physically has an impact on you emotionally and you need rest. So you're like, I just need to take a nap. I need to be left alone. I'm overwhelmed. Um, so there is a need to kind of balance that out between the sixth and the eighth house. Obviously, it's not just Mercury conjunct the sun. It's opposed Uranus, which is the ruler of your ninth. So it's shifting your beliefs and it's coming into a square with Saturn. So it's your beliefs about change, what it means to be delayed, you know? Like, what do you do with your time if you get stuck on the freeway and it's an extra 20 minutes, you know? Do you end up listening to a podcast that changes your perspective? Does a video, you know, or uh, something come on the radio that you start like listening to and you're like, oh wow, now it makes sense. Like I got rerouted because I needed to hear this. Delays, accidents, health things, all of this stuff, it's gonna kind of question your belief systems, but it's also trying to get your attention and trying to get you to focus, I think, more on uh, letting go of something and releasing something that might actually be affecting you um, emotionally or psychologically, okay? Let's see what the cards say for you, Gem. Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> interesting that uh this is like a very jupiter card you know jupiter is is kind of hanging out in your 10th house now it's retrograde so it's about having opportunities to find the dream job the passion project the right direction in terms of your professional life um things kind of mysteriously are magically presenting themselves even though the eclipse is in your 12th and this aspect is happening in your sixth I'll go out on a limb here. Those of you guys who like leave jobs, quit jobs, or get let go, because that can happen here sometimes, it's almost like Jupiter is like looking over the situation saying like, I got you, don't worry about this, something better is on the horizon. Or if you're going through a challenge with your health or anything like that, there's a higher purpose, a bigger reason for it. Um, and it's gonna, you're gonna learn something. It's gonna be about you know things kind of going more so in your favor after you've cleared something out. Um, it's interesting later in the month, we're gonna see like the sun and Mercury and Venus all come into trines with your 10th house. So it makes me feel like if you are having job changes or anything like that, it's like it's gonna present you with the right people who you will connect with who can help you find the next phase of your professional you know, growth or a new job or like a headhunter or a mentor, somebody who's gonna kind of help you lean more into that. So yes, this is a transit involving Mercury, but that card is very much associated with your 10th house as well as your seventh house. So it can be about the right people coming in to kind of help you make sense of why potentially something got delayed, something fell apart or something got cut loose, okay? Positive news for you, Gemini. So you'll have to let me know how that plays out. Cancer and Cancer arising. Hope you're doing well. We have got a Sun Mercury Kazemi taking place for you in Scorpio and it is in a sister sign. It's in your fifth house. Uh, I'm like looking at this being like, huh. <laughs> uh, this could play out a couple of different ways. First of all, uh, trines to your ascendant or your planets in Cancer tells me that you benefit by tuning in emotionally a little bit more. This is important because it's gonna try in your ascendant, so you're gonna be really feeling the feelings, but it's also all in opposition to the moon. So at the time of the eclipse, it's also being highlighted 
your fifth house, right? So south node, fifth house, sun, Mercury, Venus is there. Uh, what am I tuning into in terms of my heart's desires? Who am I turning loose? Who no longer has space in my in my heart center anymore? Is it time to say goodbye to kids who are, you know, growing up and becoming adults and taking better care of themselves now? Or are they going off to college? Are we saying goodbye to certain lovers and like loved ones? Really interesting theme, especially considering that Mercury rules your 12th house and it also rules your third Unexpected conversations, uh, back and forth, even calls, text messages and stuff with children, with younger people, with lovers, maybe even people from the past, especially if there was someone you did not get closure from because the fifth house is playmate. So there can be a sense of being like, wow, you know, so-and-so called me and said that they were sorry for like everything that they did, you know, five years ago. And like, I had no idea that they weren't over it. And like, now I know. Um, it can also be some really prominent dreams that you're having about like ex lovers or people from the past because the south node is involved. Um, some of you guys may also have like closure conversations in regards to, um, yeah, not just being hurt, but like loss, like being able to talk about loss and grief. That's the other way that I look at this. Now, Mercury can be also about tests and anything in regards to like information that's kind of coming up. So being that there's a sun Mercury coming out in your fifth house for some Cancer Risings, this could be a pregnancy. Uh, we had an eclipse in your fifth house. Now we're going to have this eclipse in your 11th house, um, all in opposition to this. If it's not you, it can also be some of your friends in your life. You might hear like, you know, your best friend is pregnant and they announce it on social media and you're like shocked by this because it's happening in your 11th house. Uh, equally, it could be shocking news that's coming from your children if you have kids as well. Um, for the most part though, this, this can be a little bit more fun. It can be the opportunity to just suddenly fall in love with someone or something and then, uh, have that realization, even if you're not ready to make the announcement, somebody else might ask you about this too. Like, do you really, how much do you really like that person? Are you guys serious? Or, you know, how is your creative project going and how, what are you working on? And you're like really excited to share that with somebody because that information is coming through the fifth house. Let's see what's gonna happen for you, Cancer. I could see a lot of Cancer and Cancer Risings being tempted to like communicate with people from the past and that can go one of two ways. Uh, the square to Saturn is trying to remind you don't fall back into old psychological patterns uh, with, with people who may not be supportive of you and uh, you know, they may not be gentle with your heart, right? So let's see what the cards say. Seven of Swords. I had a feeling, I didn't want to say it, but um, there are some conversations that are better left unsaid, unfortunately. Um, so you might be like, I had this dream about someone, do I reach out? Or like somebody texts you and you're like, do I say something? Like Seven of Swords talks about the energy of not everything being clear. It's kind of like trickster energy. So there may be a sense of somebody not being totally honest or you know, kind of being deceptive and like, ugh, just be careful, you know, be careful with that because something is missing. Perhaps maybe if there was like a missing part of a story or if there was like a missing letter or a document, or if, you know, you never found out what really happened and somebody tells you what happened and you're like shook by it. Um, but be careful with what information you get because there can be like ulterior motives for people having these conversations with you and not everything may be what it seems. Sorry, Cancer, <laughs> to let me know how it happens with that. Uh, hope, hopefully it's, it's getting clarity and getting closure. That's what I'm hoping for for you. For Leo and Leo rising, you have got a Sun Mercury Kazemi taking place in your fourth house of your home, your roots, your family. This is an interesting one because there's already been a lot of action in this area of your chart. Obviously, I know Leo's you're going through some transits right now where there are grand fixed crosses happening. Uh, you just got to get through the week. Okay, it's going to get easier. But there's some really important information that's about to come out about home, family, property values, uh, money owed, what it's going to cost to live somewhere, how much you're going to get to sell a house, uh, what a sibling has to say about a family situation or matter. Now, uh, Mercury also rules your 11th house of friends, your, your goals, and your second house of money, resources, and spending. 
some Leo and Leo risings might be moving and it might just be about reorganizing your space. Uh, maybe you're like, I boxed everything up and like, I forgot to label which one was the kitchen or, you know, I don't know where my favorite pair of shoes are. And you're like, I can't find this object. Where is it? And you're digging through the house and then boom, you find it. Um, or a friend comes over and says, hey, I'll help you unpack everything. You know, let's find that favorite pair of shoes or, you know, it's missing, but I'm sure it's here somewhere. And then you look high and low and then you find it's under a bed, <laughs> right? Something like that could happen. Um, definitely, there can also be some, in, some important information relating to family or conversations, documents, leases, mortgages, uh, things like that that are kind of coming up, conversations that you may have to have with a roommate or with a family member pertaining to what things cost can be like somebody gets the bill and they're like, oh my God, you know, you left the heater running like high for three days straight, like look at this bill. Um, or just the fact that you guys are being alerted that rent is going up. So there in turn, you know, everybody's got to pay a little bit more monthly and you got to sit down and have that conversation with everybody about that. Not always the easiest because of the squares to Saturn and also all of these oppositions that there is like a sense of you feeling like, okay, like I know not everybody is going to take this well, but I kind of have to kind of be the one to man the situation and kind of tell everybody what's up and be more assertive. So there is a, a lot of ricochet that is going to be happening for the Leo risings and it's all putting you further in the direction of being able to focus more on having control out in your life. But the other side of this, because the eclipse is in your 10th house, it's all about your public image. For some of you, it can be about private family drama, things that you do behind the scenes, your own private life kind of comes to light, can ding your reputations or your relationships and can definitely can get blown out of proportion and put out into the public space. So just keep that in mind that not everything that goes on privately is going to stay private and uh, try to keep a low profile in the midst of this transit um, and be careful who you're sharing information with because it can be something that can kind of get out very easily, um, especially if you want some of these, uh, some of these situations to be more so kind of confidential. Let's see what the cards have to say for you, Leo. King of Pentacles, you're like, I don't care, I'm on top. Um, I'm wondering though, okay, because this can be an earth sign, so it can be like a Taurus or um, a Capricorn or a Virgo. I'm wondering if it is a Virgo because of the Sun Mercury conjunction. I'm wondering if it could be a Taurus because of the opposition to all of this Taurus. I'm wondering if it's a grandfather, a father figure, an older brother, a landlord, um, somebody who manages or runs the family business, somebody who manages your family's accounts. Um, you know, your own personal investment bank or whatever. Somebody like this who kind of comes in, pretty positive card. It's about handling business, feeling solid, making good decisions, really managing money and being wise with your resources. I'm loving the fact that you have all this energy in um, the 10th house because it tells me you're making decisions that are going to be best for your business, best for your professional image and for your uh, public life. So it will play out well in the end. But it can materialize as things like having to tell people you have to move, having to tell partners you're not ready for commitment because you're super focused on what you're trying to build, right? Your business, your legacy. So looks like that's going to go very well. Um, but there can be a much more kind of like between the eyes, direct, very logical, practical sense that's kind of coming through, which some people can kind of find is detached. It's not as warm and kind of fuzzy as you usually are. Okay. Good luck, Leo. Let's take it to Virgo and Virgo rising. What's up, my Virgos? Uh, we got a Sun Mercury Kazemi taking place in your natal third house. This is important because both you and Gemini are mercurial kings and queens. Uh, where Mercury goes is where information flows for you guys. So Mercury rules your 10th house of career and uh, responsibility and authority. Mercury also rules your first house, which is about your actions, your body, and your visibility. Um, Sun Mercury Kazemi, my Virgos, you guys have to chill a little bit. There can be a sense with the Sun Mercury Kazemi because um, the Sun is strongly tied to this that it's almost like you could just word vomit your worst fears and nightmares and you could just like let your mind run away with itself and be anxious and not paying attention. 
Um, there can also be a sense of like not speaking very kindly to yourself or falling into like worst case scenario and kind of like mentally spiraling and feeling like you're just super anxious and it's just hard for you to even breathe. The third house can be breath. Taking walks, relaxing, uh, tapping, breath work, you know, like cool it on smoking if you smoke. Really try to like detox the lungs this week. Um, maybe do, maybe do what Kanye is doing, go on a verbal fast, you know, like it, it's about not using the words and tur turning more into your inner world and being like, no, I'm releasing that thought. So as like the anxiety is coming up or like things are coming up that you don't want to continue to think about or things that you don't want to talk about, it's important for you to basically be like control, alt, delete on that. Like, you know, you're, you're not, you're not going to be thinking those thoughts anymore. You're not going to like let that run the show. Um, obviously all in opposition to the ninth house, which is like what's going on out in the world, things that are going on globally, you know, the bigger picture, your beliefs or travel. Um, some Mercury conjunction can also be like, I lost my ID. I lost my phone. I can't find my car. Where are my keys? Like that kind of stuff, especially because Mercury is involved. Um, and you may have to kind of check your immediate environment and see what's going on and, uh, just kind of relax a little bit and think everything through in terms of where you've been so you can track it down and you can find it. Um, not a time to be rushing, okay? I think I've said this to you several times, but this also makes me feel like if you're driving, you're on your phone, you're not paying attention, especially because the sun is involved. It's about not having visibility or clarity. Boom, you end up kind of bumping into somebody and rear-ending somebody. So be uh, very alert and be paying attention when you're driving on your phone, when you're sending emails, because there can also be mistakes. But by the same token, there can be this awareness that's like, wow, I need to get out of my own way. And I can't keep spiraling and doing this. And I need to kind of detach. So it could be that you're saying I need to take a break from social media or, you know, I don't want to watch the news or I'm, you know, turning off the TV. Something like that could be taking place for you. And you're realizing that, you know, it's something that's a pattern, that's a habit that's kind of come up and it's not healthy. Okay. Let's see what the cards have to say for you. You got it, uh, the emperor. I like this. I like this especially because Mercury rules the 10th house and like it's about being assertive and it's about taking charge. And so I think you're realizing that um, by not speaking up and not saying things, it's almost like you get yourself more frustrated and you're like, oh, I should have said something. And now you're realizing like, I'm not going to hold back anymore, you know, like I'm just going to make the decision to say something and speak my mind so that way I'm not dealing with some of this frustration um, down the road. The emperor is associated with Mars. He's also associated with like bosses or um, father figures, parents, husbands, strong masculine like Mars energy and it's about being assertive. So this is why I brought up Mars being in your 10th house because it's all going to start in conjuncting these degrees and you're going to realize that part of being a good boss or a good employer is learning how to delegate tasks and being more assertive. Um, and maybe you're kind of releasing and letting go of this fear of coming across too intense and you're tuning more into being like, no, I need to actually start communicating and speaking up because it's going to make my life or my job a whole lot easier. Good luck. Now we have got Libra and Libra rising. Hopefully you're doing well, Libra. Um, you have got a south node, sun, mercury, you know, stellium going on. This will be a Kazemi actually though, um, in your second house of money, resources, spending power. Now Libra, you're just coming off of an eclipse that was in your eighth house, which is most likely rocking and rattling and rolling all kinds of stuff in regards to joint resources, money, mortgages, um, you know, investments, inheritances, other people's resources. Obviously the eclipse in the North Node there, you're seeing more of that growth. With the Sun Mercury Kazemi in your second house, it is taking into consideration your 12th house Lord, which is about self undoing, uh, where you get in your own way. Um, anxiety, fear behind the scenes, you know, letting go, but it's also a spiritual house. It's about a connection to a higher power, a connection to the other side, um, and being able to listen more to your intuition, especially in the second house is when it comes to what you're eating, when it comes to where you're spending money, what you value, right? So you're going through a change of values as planets like the South node, uh, and the sun and Mercury all swing through the second house. Now, Mercury also rules your ninth house, 
which is going to be all about uh, the bigger picture, the higher mind, travel, education. Um, I feel like for Libra Risings, this may materialize as a really strong intuitive hit, a gut feeling, or maybe even a dream. It could be a message that you get in a reading. It could be this video um, that's like letting you know, like, hey, like be on the lookout for a financial shift. We've seen a lot of like rags to riches opportunities for Libra Risings because of the eclipses in your eighth house that suddenly you go from having nothing to like way more than you ever imagined. And in some certain situations, especially with the squares to Saturn, that if you risk it all and you gamble it on something, it may not pay off. Right now, be very careful with your resources. I would say it's not the time to let the transits to get the best of you and to put a bunch of money into someone or something thinking that it's necessarily going to pay off or pay out. Um, but by the same token, it's this spiritual awareness that's like, I don't need this for security, right? It's learning to trust the universe, knowing that spirit is going to provide for you um, and not allowing yourself to kind of act out in subconscious ways that can be like hoarding, keeping too much, not sharing, uh, that kind of stuff. So I think with the oppositions to Uranus, um, it talks about the fact that, yeah, the, the lotteries, you know, wealthy in, in partners, investments that suddenly pay off are possible, um, but that you shall not uh, find true happiness by completely relying on material goods. And this is the check that you're getting from Saturn. Saturn is saying, that's great that you've made money, but like, does it make you happy? Um, do you enjoy what you're doing in the process of making money? Once again, like I said, I'm a Sun Mercury, you know, in, in Scorpio and I'm a Libra rising. And what I'm realizing with these transits is it's about breaking down the need to feel like you have to possess things. Um, there is this willingness to step back from certain, you know, fixations with finances and really leaning into creating for the sake of creating and just being like the universe is going to meet you. If you're putting everything into it, your heart and soul into it, and you're really happy with what you're creating, then you can't really put a price on that. Um, and you really shouldn't have expectations for how well some of those projects will do. But if you're creating from the heart space, then you're going to see that there's going to be things that are going to pay off and there's going to be crowdfunding or things that are just going to, you know, miraculously just kind of skyrocket. So watch for the trappings right now of getting sucked into the material world. And uh, maybe there is this realization that you have a dream about, oh, I, we sold the house or, you know, I lost this object or that, you know, I won the lottery watch for some of those omens that might be coming through some of your dreams libra it's manifesting for me is like you know i'm in the process of cleaning out my closet uh going through all of my astrology books and all of my tarot decks and a bunch of stuff that i have that are collectors that i've been holding on to but i'm like i don't need them you know so a lot of them are really valuable and i'm in the process of getting ready to, to sell some of them just because I don't, I don't need to have like four of a deck <laughs> For four separate prints of a deck. Um, I have the Knight of Swords for you, Libra. So um, swift action, having conversations, being quick and on your feet when it comes to being able to pivot. You know, I look at this and I go, there could unexpectedly be money that's, you know, offered to you or something where you get a bill and you're like, oh my God, you know, I got to do something. I got to do something now. This is past due and you had no idea. Um, I think this is just about being able to kind of be on your feet and knowing how to communicate and being able to uh, remedy the situation. This can also be about Libras. This can be about Aquariuses or Geminis um, being involved, or it can be you in general. It can be about quick moves. It can be about quick sales. It can be about, um, you know, some information coming fast to you or an opportunity to invest very quickly but it's about not leaping into something without the information, okay? So be very careful with investments this week, Libra. Good luck. We have got Scorpio and Scorpio rising. What's going on, Scorpio? Hopefully you're doing well in the midst of this lunar eclipse in your seventh house. Wow. Um, where do I begin? Well, you've got a Sun Mercury Kazemi in your sign, so that's pretty significant, even though I know the eclipse has kind of stolen your thunder. You're still in the midst of your birthday season. You have got the Sun Mercury conjunction in your first house. Um, Mercury rules your 11th house of goals, friends, and associations. Mercury also rules for you your eighth house of joint resources and anything in regards to uh, partnerships, money, documents, psychological stuff. The eighth house is where we have all of that karmic entanglement. <sighs> Man. Um, 
I could see this as like a really significant announcement. Let's just start there. It could be a very significant announcement that you're getting ready to uh, make Scorpio. It could also be that you're tuning into something. It's like you're, you're more alert. You're looking for the signs, the omens. It's like a lot of you guys are listening to these astrology videos on YouTube and you're already aware that shift is happening because there is an eclipse in your sign and other people's sign. Um, so I think that this is about you being more observant, but this may also be that you're more tuned in and you're more just kind of like, I have to stop being afraid of talking about my goals. I just have to start telling people what I'm thinking. You know, the eighth house being the connected to Mercury is a very psychic house that naturally is more of like a scorpionic energy. So maybe you're having conversations about, um, you know, what you think is coming, what you're manifesting. Maybe you're trying to manifest more money. Maybe you're trying to bring all your goals in. You're sharing your goals with your friends. Maybe you're telling people, you know, on a platform or on social media, a goal that you have for some fundraising, or you open up and you share some really personal bit of information about yourself um, with other people. And it's like shocking and it's like very unexpected. This can also be just like sharing a new version of yourself um, with other people as well, because the first house does deal with your, your physical appearance and how you look. And um, people might be like, oh my God, you changed this or you changed that or your hair looks different or I like those glasses on you. And like you're getting more feedback from people. But I think for the most part, it's like some something about you listening to your body, listening to your goals, uh, really being mindful of your body language and sharing really profound, deep personal information uh, about yourself with groups of people can actually help you achieve some of these goals all of these uh, planets are in opposition to that eclipse that was in your seventh house. And so that's telling me that it's about what you share with other people and you open yourself up to being one with the universe. And then the seventh house is how everybody kind of floods in and they come to kind of meet you. So you're gonna have a little bit more exposure. Maybe there's more eyes on you more than usual. Um, and I think it's just a really amazing time to be like sharing with groups of people what changes, transformations, or, or goals are kind of taking place in your life. Obviously, lots of squares to uh, Saturn and oppositions to Uranus. So your goals may not resonate with everybody in the family as well as with uh, partners, business partners, or spouses. So even though this is very personal, like there's like a sense of you having an awareness or you realizing something isn't working for you or you have just an intuitive hit, you can share that with people in your life, like your partners or your family, and they could be like, you're crazy, or I don't agree with that, or I don't like that. So just keep in mind that this, some of these things might be just for you personally. Let's see what the cards say for you, Scorpio. <laughs> the tarot is kind of sassy, huh? I love it when it does that. Uh, the death card, this is your card. Um, that version of you is like dead and gone. That's kind of like the vibe that I'm getting. It's like somebody might bring something up and you're like, no, that's not my jam anymore. Like, that's not me anymore. Like, I don't resonate with that anymore. And somebody's like, what? It's about a change and a transformation. And it can be something that is uncomfortable. It can be something that's painful, but keep in mind what you have to gain, right? So the polarity for everybody in the midst of this is where you detach from something, you have something to gain where Taurus is. So you know, very personal for Scorpio and Scorpio risings. Like you're learning not to communicate or behave a certain way, or you're maybe you're dropping the ego a little bit, or you're opening up and you're softening a little bit more. And then you have uh, the opportunity to go deeper into the seventh house where it doesn't just become about you. It becomes us, right? What you want, what you need, your direction, where are we going? What are we building? And there's a lot that can come through the relationship sector. Um, but this is about you realizing that you're like, wow, I'm not exactly who I used to be, but I don't really know who I am yet. And I'm kind of like in limbo. I'm in transition. That's fine. That's okay. Just that acknowledgement, the awareness that you in your life is changing is all that it takes. Good luck. I think it's so funny when that happens. It does that to me all the time. All right, for Sag and Sag rising, we have a Sun Mercury Kazemi taking place in the sign of Scorpio. It's taking place in your natal 12th house. Uh, this is probably one of the more interesting places to have it. Um, 
Obviously, Sagittarius, you know, the 12th house is the subconscious, right? It can be the addict. It can be what goes on in our minds, what goes on in our bedroom, behind the scenes, in secret, things that we might secretly obsess over or where we have a tendency to kind of get lost or kind of hide out or isolate. Uh, Mercury rules your natal 7th house of relationships, and it also rules your 10th house of career. Now, some of the things that I've said for you guys is like there can be this feeling of like, feeling like you're losing it a little bit right now because all of the 12th house is where everything kind of goes to rest. So really significant conversations you have behind the scenes with, with partners, business partners, romantic partners, okay? Especially because Mercury rules the 10th and the 7th. So you've got your 7th house and your 10th house Lord. So you're either having pillow talk with a partner and talking about feelings or you're going to couples therapy and you're working through something and you're realizing like you're having issues in a relationship because of things that might have been suppressed or you're having like backroom meetings and secret conversations with bosses about things that are going on at work and stuff that may may not be working that needs to be worked out. Um, the positive side is that, you know, there can be some really amazing insights that you have if you're overwhelmed and you're feeling like you need to get away from it all, being in nature, you know, going and, and doing a retreat or just taking a couple days to be by yourself and resting and recuperating can be a lot of clarity, right? But the South Node is saying, like, don't get too zenned out. Like, don't go too far away from society. Like, don't completely dip out. Communicate with other people and talk about how you're feeling. Readings, uh, you know, regressions, uh, hypnosis, um, dreams. These are all things that might come. Um, I, I recently had the, this most recent, um, Mercury retrograde. It was, I'm a zero degree rising. So the Mercury went retrograde in my 12th house and it came into the conjunction with the sun right as it was conjuncting my ascendant. And I had the craziest dreams for like three days. So I'm wondering if that's something that you guys might have, that there can be some real specific, um, symbols and omens that are coming through dreams that's letting you know like where you're, you're purging, you're clearing, you're detoxing and cutting stuff out. Now, if you have a feeling that you can't trust a certain somebody, whether it's a partner or possibly even it's like a business partner or there's just something that needs to be kind of like hashed out, like, you know, some of this stuff can come out. Some, some sad risings are gonna find out that some of their partners aren't really uh, all that best suited for them or they might find that who they were working for is not really who they thought they were, unfortunately. And so that's the other side of what can kind of come up with some of these transits. Obviously all in a square to Saturn. So it's like knowing when to communicate and not communicate. <laughs> uh, I was listening to, a, I think it was uh, uh, Cam White this week. He was really funny. He was talking about like Sagittarius risings and how, um, you know, anything in regards to the 12th house, like, in the, in the karma and the eclipses, he was like saying it's it's like the clown tax, right? It's the tax that you have to pay for being a Sag rising. Um, so I could see like the sun and the mercury as being like, you're, you're just burning and you just wanna let somebody have it um, because you know you have had a realization or you have found something out about somebody and then it squares Saturn and you're like, no, I probably shouldn't say anything. So what you do with the information that comes is up to you. Uh, you may opt to just not say anything or just journal it out, but there can definitely be some real breakthroughs in terms of being able to see people's true colors. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out for you, Saj. Let me know. Let's see what the cards say for you. Card that I get is the Page of Pentacles. Um... It's kind of like, what do I do with this information? Or what do I do with what somebody has told me or given me or shown me, right? It's like this, this, little, this little pebble or something that you were just kind of gifted and you're like, okay, it could be something. What do I do with it? Um, I think that it could be that somebody gives you some information um, pertaining to like food for thought. Like somebody might be kind of like, I observe this or that, like do with it what you want, but this is what I think. And it's like something that you go and you sit on and you think about, and it really gets you thinking about your values or it gets you thinking about your resources or your security. This can be about earth signs too. So it could be about Virgos. It could be about Capricorns or Tauruses. Obviously, you just had an eclipse in your sixth house in Taurus, and you have uh, Mercury as the ruler of the 10th. So if Tauruses or, or Virgos kind of pop up, it would not surprise me. It could be younger people as well. Um, 
talking to you about like things that they're going through, possibly even financially. That's something else that can be kind of coming up right now and sharing with you information about finances. But I'd be careful, you know, if you've got like disgruntled employees or people talking about the fact that they're not happy with what they're getting paid, things like that, like don't partake because to me it seems like it could be something even that's very petty that may not even be worth getting yourself involved in, okay? Good luck, Sag, good luck. Let me know how that pans out. We have cap and cap rising. What's going on, my cappies? Uh, so it'll be November 8th. I'm having to move forward. So we have a Kazemi that's taking place um, that will be taking place on the 8th, but it can be going into the 9th. Um, so a Kazemi, Sun Kazemi conjunction in your 11th house of friendships, goals, and associations. So we've got Mercury rules your ninth house of like the higher mind and anything in regards to travel and um, possibly even, you know, um, education, legal work, law stuff, that kind, of, that kind of stuff, gurus. And Mercury also rules your 12th, excuse me, your sixth house, hello, six, uh, which relates to animals and your daily routine and your health and your schedule. Here's what I think. I think that because this is happening in the area of your friends, uh, your goals, um, especially if you have somebody who is a friend that's a Scorpio, pay attention. Somebody might come in and they might share some information with you about traveling, something they believe in, um, a book that they've read, something like that. Um, or they might be talking to you about changes that they're having with travel, uh, or their health or something pertaining to animals. So they're going to be like, yeah, this thing happened to my pet or, you know, like, oh, my plane's delayed. I'm going to be later before I meet you. Something like that could happen. Um, you might have a very insightful conversation with somebody um, while traveling. If you're in an airport or if you're taking a class, you might learn something very significant. And there might also be changes that kind of come about um, either in the workspace or in regards to your health. If you're somebody who's like traveling to do some training and you're having to meet with a group of people, there might be something really good that comes from it. But this can also be like an awareness of who your true friends are. It can be an awareness of what your goals really are. And it takes you being around a group of people and talking before something comes up and you're like, wow, I never really thought about it that way. Thank you for giving me like that little bit of information or giving me that feedback. Now I know what direction I'm going in, how I can like perfect something. Friends can also give recommendations for trips or for uh, general, you know, health and uh, even like connecting you to various healers or practitioners. That's the other way that this can pan out. As with all of the signs, you know, we're seeing just a mashup of oppositions to Uranus, which is kind of flippy floppy. Um, and we're seeing squares to Saturn in the second house, which is kind of uncomfortable and it's delays. I will say this for you, uh, Capricorn. The south node in the sun and Mercury, you're becoming less consumed with what other people think about you. It's like if people are going to do what they're going to do. You're not here to impress everybody. You may feel like you have to lose a few friends because you guys aren't of the same perspective. Maybe you've spent some time with people from the past and you're realizing like those are just not your people. And it's possibly also because you're going deeper into your north node fifth house transit where you're focusing on what makes you happy what you love, what you're creating, your talent. So you might feel like as you're going deeper into that, um, it's giving you less fulfillment or you're not feeling like you're getting the validation that you usually would want from some of your friends. Um, and you're like, what is the point? What am I doing? You know, like, what did I do wrong? You're not doing anything wrong. It's just this realization that if you're not surrounding yourself with people who are helping boost you up um, and, and really push, help you push towards your goal of finding happiness and joy and maybe even your own business or new hobbies. Those aren't your people in general, okay? Let's see what the cards have to say for you, my dear Capricorns. Ooh, judgment. It's like the time has come, you know? Like if you have to have a conversation that you're turning someone loose or that... You, you don't really know if you can continue the friendship or if you're not on the same page in terms of goals, like the time has come and it can finally be that there are certain conversations or certain Facebook posts or certain things that people say over the next week that show you their true colors and makes you realize that you're like, I don't really think I can kind of hang out with, you know, these people or that's not my goal anymore. I'm shifting goals and I'm going more in this direction. 
it's, it's definitely a part of like a change in your values. Like that's the thing. It's like, I have seen in some situations when clients go through these transits, there's like a process of them really building themselves up and like focusing on shifting careers and developing um, new talents. And they're not as social because they're focused on what they're developing and like building wealth or building their own business. And then when you emerge from out of this square, then it's like, wow, you have something very successful, but there's a lot of people that you lost along the way, right? All right, so let's see what the cards have to say for you. Oh, hello, judgment, <laughs> total Mercury moment. So judgment is basically saying the time has come. It is time for you to basically go, um, you know, I finally have to, I have to make this decision. I have to call it. And judgment is also very much like the cause and effect of what has been a longer series of things that have been going on. So if you've been having some of these issues for a while with like back and forth on a goal, back and forth with a friend, uh, back and forth with whether or not you jump into something new that you really love, now is the time that you're going to make that decision. You're going to commit to it. And it's like, there's no going back from that point. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> Sorry about that cap. All right. So let's now take this to Aquarius in Aquarius rising. Hello, Aquarius. Uh, you have a Sun Mercury Kazemi taking place. This will be um, happening on the 8th of November. Okay. Today, leading into the 9th. Um, and it's going to be in your 10th house of career. The sun and Mercury come into conjunction in your natal 10th house. 10th house, your public image, uh, announcing something to the world, something that goes on at work, something that has to do with bosses, information that is coming out in terms of the company maybe that you work for, can also be like resignations. Um, Mercury rules your eighth house of joint resources and other people's money. And it also rules your fifth house, which deals with, uh, creativity, self-employment, children. Um, so the actions at work, right. And the fact that like the sun and Mercury have been conjunct the South node. Some of you guys have been thinking about shifting directions with what you're doing professionally, retiring, you know, quitting, starting your own business, like, you know, letting go of some responsibility, turning some of that over to other people. So you can focus more on your fourth house transits. What do I think about this? I mean, I think that in some situations you are going to, especially if you're an Aquarius rising, there is a sense of like really weighing the pros and the cons of stepping away from something and being like, do I, can I justify taking this job? Like, is it going to be worth my time? Is the salary going to work for me? Are they not paying me enough? That kind of stuff. There can also be a sense of being like, uh, going into work and then hearing in some, some situations like, oh, you know, we're actually, you know, cutting back because we have to watch our budget. So we're cutting back on spending or we're laying people off or, you know, we're letting people retire earlier or we're offering, you know, benefits for those of you guys who want to accept like a severance package that can happen. Um, but it's interesting cause it's a gain, right? Cause Mercury is the ruler. Now it can be that some of you guys are like, I'm retiring because now I want to focus on, you know, my time or I'm stepping away from my job because I'm focusing more on, you know, having a family or having children, um, or I'm cutting back because I want to focus on a new creative project. So there's something new that you get as a result of this. And you'll see this a lot, Aquarius, like literally the next two or three years. I mean, Jupiter is going to go into your fourth house next year, and then we're going to see it go into your fifth. So a lot of you guys are like, I want to focus on my family or I want to invest in property, or I want to be able to like work from home and have freedom. And I don't want to feel like I have to have this like stuffy job where I have to show up and, you know, like listen to a boss. So you got a, a lot of issues right now with authority. Um, and rightfully so, because, you know, I think all the planets going through the 10th house is challenging Saturn in your sign. So there's definitely a lot of like having to show up and do work and be responsible, but you're like, I don't know if this resonates. And it all is opposing uh, the North Node Uranus in your fourth house where there's like lots of changes and uh, shifts going on at home. And you're realizing that um, there is a need to be able to find balance between everything. Saturn is sandwiched in between these two, the focal point of the squares. Uh, so really it's about your goals, your boundaries, your commitments. If you decide I'm quitting, you're going to quit. If you decide like this is not the path for me, you're going to kind of segue and you're going to make a change. But I think for the most part, it can be that there's opportunity to leave because there's something more um, 
uh, abundant, there's more uh, or better benefits, or there's going to be more freedom or more emotional fulfillment. Some of you guys might be quitting because you're like, ah, I'm relocating or, you know, I'm stepping away from work to like figure out what my passion is and spend time with my family. It'll kind of materialize a number of different ways, but look for really important conversations that you're having at work or if you're making a big announcement um, or if you're having a conversation about uh, severances or uh, retirements, uh, options, stocks, all of that stuff. Definitely uncomfortable though, the fact that it's going to square Saturn because you may not be totally thrilled about the sacrifice that you have to make or you may have to kind of stand up and go like, no, this doesn't work for me. Ouch. Um, not surprised by this. I'm not surprised. I think that this is also speaking. And once again, you can't see it. I made this, I took all the planets out so it made it easier to see, but Mars is going retrograde right now in your fifth house, okay? So Mars is really the energy of the tower. And I'm thinking about like Mars going retrograde and it's trining Saturn and it's in conjuncting all of these planets you have in your 10th house. And it's like trying to say like, loosen up, like let go of the need for responsibility, like free yourself of that, like focus on what's gonna make you happy. Even if that means like a little bit of like not knowing where you're gonna live next or not really knowing which, which city, which house, which family, like there's like a lot of not needing to be tied down with your honest in your fourth house. The tower, uh, just toppling everything, being like, okay, well that's done. You know, I've talked to a lot of Aquarius risings and it's been interesting to see the year, last year or two that you guys have had, there's been a lot of people who have been like, okay, I had health issues and then I had to move and then I had to give up something work-wise and I had you know, family or relationship issues. And I've heard people go the opposite end of the spectrum who have been like alone for long periods of time and now they're like working in a relationship again. So it's gonna be different for everyone, but totally clearing the foundation, right? And I think this is what's happening for a lot of Aquarius Risings right now with this eclipse that's taking place, right? It's clearing the decks at home and it's removing and alleviating a need to focus on being at work. So if it's a home crisis, a family crisis, if there's a parent that needs you, if you need to take time off to deal with your emotions and your feelings, it's kind of like getting you out of focusing on work so you can get back to the foundation and be able to kind of restructure everything. But you, you know, as well as your home, as well as your career, it's all being reoriented right now. And it's because something has kind of fallen, it's been toppled. And likely that's the stuff that's either going on with you emotionally or within your family that's creating huge shifts in these other areas of your life. Obviously, because um, also this is, you know, happening in, in uh, angular houses, there's, there's just a lot more action when we see planets that are going through these parts of your chart. Um, I'm excited to see what happens. I'm optimistic that whatever the change is, it can be more positive and it can actually bring you closer to what's going to bring you more emotional peace and stability in the long run. Let's see. Um, so yeah, let me know how that works out for you guys with the tower. Yeah, that's, that's definitely one that's a little bit more challenging, but like a lot of you guys have been feeling this really since the eclipse that we had at the end of October. Let me know how that relates to you and like what's going on in your life currently. What are you completely dismantling and rebuilding? Good luck. Now we've got Pisces and Pisces rising. We have got a Sun Mercury Kazemi taking place in the sign of Scorpio in your natal ninth house. Now, similar to Cancer, uh, you are a sister sign to Scorpio, so you're gonna tap into the intuition, the emotions, the feelings from some of these trines that you're going to be receiving. The Sun Mercury Kazemi is taking place pretty much from the ninth, the, the eighth into the ninth, so you might see it both days uh, where the Sun and Mercury meet. The ninth house, college, higher education, travel, legal paperwork, publishing, mentors, gurus, airports, you know, all the fun stuff. Um, and this is, uh, um, you know, Mercury is the ruler of your seventh house of relationships, business partners, clients, and also the fourth house, which deals with family and the past, Pisces. Um, I'm wondering if there is a sense of reconnecting maybe or hearing from old mentors, teachers, gurus, guides, um, partners from the past, you know, you're traveling and you run into somebody or you connect to them or uh, you meet, you bump into somebody at an airport, right? Something like that could happen. I also think that it might be about 
um, legal documents and things that you're waiting for to be processed, to be able to get married, to get visas, to relocate, to buy houses. Um, you might be waiting on a whole slew of things from another person to get verified or to get okayed before you can do any of these things. Um, the fourth house deals with property, you know, Mercury, Gemini, but it also deals with the past or family. So there can be a sense of like reconnecting with partners from the past, reconnecting with family from the past, um, introducing partners possibly to a uh, family while they're visiting, um, and a re-evaluation of your belief system when it comes to the bigger picture of relationships as well, because this is the bigger picture. It's a very positive house, by the way. The ninth house is where we see uh, good, unexpected things that happen, expansion, you know, our belief systems change. Unfortunately, kind of like the ricochet, though, is the oppositions that we see to uh, Uranus and also the North Node and then the squares to Saturn. So this is where I say documents, because this is like legal and this is like waiting for passports, visas, tickets, um, and suddenly, unexpectedly having something that kind of gets kind of like disarrayed or even lost. So you might say to your partner, like, where's the house keys? Or what do you mean you lost the, the train ticket? Like, where is my wallet? What did you do with it? That kind of stuff. And having difficult uh, conversations or finding it difficult to kind of communicate or dealing with some anxiety about things that go missing or cannot be found. Um, there can also be just like a couple days where there's a bit of a crisis of faith happening with that Mercury conjunction. But right when you're in the midst of the conjunction and the square, I think the Kazemi kicking in is like remembering what, you know, a teacher taught you or going back to a specific mantra or uh, cracking open a book that was really helpful for you in the past or reaching back out to a therapist to kind of help balance the higher mind through communication, uh, you know, talking to them on the phone, writing them, sending them an email, um, and also being able to get clarity when you're feeling a little bit spiritually stumped with that square to Saturn in the 12th house. Um, these are houses that are very much about information. These are mutable, right? So information and things changing. So something is changing about your education plans, your travel plans, your uh, your conversation even um, with a with a partner you're realizing that you know what they're how they're communicating what they believe in might differ from you and you have this epiphany and you realize that everybody across the board I guess I should have said that the sun mercury Kazemi is about an epiphany especially in Scorpio you just have to look for it and you have to be able to read between the lines so some people will be giving you very very significant life advice but you have to be open to hearing it because it may not resonate with um, how you're seeing the world right now or what it is that you believe in you have to really practice being open um, and also patience for where there is delays or possibly even blind spots in the midst of that saturn square see what the cards have to say for you my pisces you also get page of pentacles food for thought um you know a bit of advice it can be something very simple, something very small. I wonder if this is like somebody offering to remedy something or somebody saying, I can fix it, but it's gonna cost you something. Um, it's also saying it's the beginning process, which is very interesting. So the beginning process of maybe communicating more with a partner about money and resources and values or um, talking about, you know, realistically what it would cost to, uh, you know, go back to school, complete a program, what it may cost to potentially go you know, on your dream vacation with your partner and you sit down and you start talking about a budget um, before you guys make a decision when it comes to actually going somewhere, okay? Well guys, like I said, happy lunar eclipse. Uh, it's a bit of a wild week ahead, so just hang tight in there. I will be back on Thursday. I'll have another video for you guys. Um, I'm hoping that you're doing well in the midst of all of these transits. You can always go back and watch some of the videos that I've been discussing. And I'm gonna keep telling you guys my uh, Lunar Eclipse video is already out. So if you wanna watch that, you can. Saturdays, we're obviously always here doing live readings on the channel. This Saturday at seven o'clock p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern, we're doing tarot readings. You'll be able to sign up for that pretty soon. Um, but yeah, leave me some messages in the comments. It'd be, love, it'd be great to hear from you guys and, and hear uh, what magical things are playing out throughout the day. This video may even be part of that information is that's bringing light to something for you. 
Um, do you have a Sun Mercury Kazemi natally? I'd love to hear from you. And yeah, let me know what, what Mercury uh, kind of showed you guys today. He can be kind of kind of tricky and kind of playful. Leave me comments. I uh, would love to hear from you. Hopefully you guys uh, navigate this well and I will see you in just a couple of days. Be well and take care.